This is the first video in which I'll analyze the pronunciation of a subscriber. This recording was submitted by El Pulpito. He's German and in his late 20s. He studied Spanish in school for five years and also studied Spanish as a university student, so a lot of formal language instruction. As a high school student, he spent three months in Tijuana, Mexico, and as a college student, he spent a semester in Tenerife, Spain. So he also has immersion experience in two different Spanish-speaking cultures. He's now a Spanish teacher himself. So El Pulpito is a Spanish nerd after my own heart. I think it would be very interesting to start out just listening to his entire recording. Feel free to make your own evaluation as you listen. Then afterward, I'll share my thoughts. James y el melocotón gigante Fue en este momento cuando ocurrió la primera cosa de todas, la cosa bastante rara que luego dio lugar a las otras cosas mucho más raras que le sucedieron. Porque de pronto, justo a sus espaldas, James oyó un movimiento de hojas y al volverse vio a un anciano vestido con un extraño traje de color verde oscuro que salía de entre los arbustos. Era un hombre de pequeña estatura, pero tenía una enorme cabeza calva y la cara casi oculta tras unas pobladas patillas negras. Se paró a unos metros y se quedó mirando seriamente a James, apoyado en su bastón. Cuando habló, su voz era lenta y chirriante. «Acércate a mí, pequeño», dijo señalando a James con el dedo. «Ven aquí y te enseñaré algo maravilloso». James estaba demasiado asustado como para moverse. El anciano avanzó, cojeando, un par de pasos, y entonces metió una mano en el bolsillo de la chaqueta y sacó una bolsita de papel blanco. «¿Ves esto?» susurró, balanceando suavemente la bolsita ante los ojos de James. «¿Sabes lo que es esto, hijo? ¿Sabes lo que hay dentro de esta bolsita?» Entonces se acercó otro poco, se inclinó hacia adelante y aproximó tanto su cara a la de James que éste pudo notar su respiración en las mejillas. La respiración del anciano olía a moho viejo y a cerrado, igual que el aire de una bodega subterránea. «Echa una mirada, hijo», dijo, abriendo la bolsa y enseñándosela a James. En su interior, James vio un montón de cositas verdes que parecían piedrecitas o cristales del tamaño de un grano de arroz. Eran increíblemente hermosas y tenían un extraño brillo, una especie de cualidad luminosa que las hacía destellar y relucir de una forma maravillosa. «Escúchalas», susurró el anciano. «Escucha cómo se mueven». James miró en el interior de la bolsa y pudo comprobar que se notaba un débil murmullo y también notó que aquellas miles de cositas verdes se movían lenta, muy muy lentamente, subiéndose unas encima de otras, como si estuvieran vivas. «Hay más poder y magia en estas cositas de aquí que en todo el resto del mundo», dijo el anciano con voz suave. «Pero, pero, ¿qué son?», murmuró James, encontrando por fin su voz. «¿De dónde vienen?». «Ajá», susurró el anciano, «ni te lo imaginas». Se agachó un poco más y acercó la cara a la de James, tanto que su nariz rozaba la frente de este. De pronto dio un salto hacia atrás y empezó a blandir su bastón por encima de la cabeza. «¡Lenguas de cocodrilo!» gritó. «¡Mil largas y viscosas lenguas de cocodrilo cosidas en el cráneo de una bruja muerta durante veinte días y veinte noches, con los ojos de un lagarto! Se añaden los dedos de un mono joven, el buche de un cerdo, el pico de un loro verde, el jugo de un puerco espín y tres cucharadas de azúcar». Se cuece todo durante otra semana y se deja que la luna haga el resto. Sin más ceremonias, puso la blanca bolsita de papel en la mano de James y dijo, «Ten, sujétala, es para ti». Cuando yo era joven y todavía iba al colegio, me gustaban mucho los idiomas. Y después de aprender francés, yo empecé a aprender español. Y cuando tenía 16 años, yo... Fui a México por tres meses uh, por un intercambio y viví tres meses en Tijuana, México. Y acá conocí a muchas personas. Viví en una familia mexicana y todo el día hablaba español siempre con todos, ya que no hablaba muy bien inglés <ríe> ni alemán. Claro, yo soy de Alemania. Um, en México no se habla mucho alemán. Y por eso siempre 
hablábamos en español casi en casi todas las situaciones y yo aprendí muchísimo durante este tiempo y después cuando volví a Alemania decidí pues me gustó tanto este tiempo en México y me gusta tanto este idioma lo quiero estudiar y después quiero enseñar español yo mismo eso es algo que me fascina solo fue un intercambio de tres meses pero aún hoy se puede ver el impacto que tuvo en mí en mi vida en mi carrera en el trabajo todavía sigo en contacto con mi familia de México y por eso me fascinan los idiomas porque si no hubiera aprendido a hablar español nunca nos habríamos conocido y mi vida habría sido totalmente diferente y espero que eso también inspire a mis propios alumnos para que vean lo poderoso que son los idiomas All right, now I'll give my analysis. To start out with, the pronunciation in this sample is outstanding. I think that El Pulpito could be mistaken for a native Spanish speaker in short exchanges, and he obviously speaks with features of peninsular or European Spanish, in particular his pronunciation of the velar fricative in words like these. I think his best feature is the accuracy of his vowels, very authentic sounding. Additionally, he pronounces the approximate versions of voiced stops in a very native-like way. His L is also high and bright, very Spanish-y. These are just a few of many things that he does quite well. Now with regard to things that could be improved. In this recording, El Pulpito pretty consistently pronounces V as a voiced labiodental, V. So for example, he pronounces these words like movimiento, volverse, and vio. But in standard Spanish, there is no V sound. V is pronounced exactly like B, with a precise articulation depending on phonetic context. While El Pulpito is quite consistent in pronouncing B correctly, in this sample he pronounces V as V in all but a couple cases. Much of the time, El Pulpito pronounces double L and Y as a voiced palatal fricative or approximant, and in these instances I'd say that his pronunciation of this sound is perfect. However, some of the time he pronounces double L and Y with very little consonant quality, almost like yod at the beginning of a diphthong. So, for example, he pronounces oyo, something like oyo, and aquellas, something like aquellas. For nearly all Spanish dialects around the world, this pronunciation of double L and Y is far too vowel-like. But as I mentioned, he pronounces this sound extremely well much of the time. There were two instances in the reading in which the S sound immediately preceded the trilled R. This consonant combination is a tricky bit of phonetic gymnastics even for native Spanish speakers, and most Spanish dialects resolve it in one of two ways. I think a majority of dialects around the world reduce the S and then trill the R normally. So this word combination would be pronounced mucho más raras, or even mucho más raras. And this one would be either nariz rosaba la frente, or nariz rosaba la frente. Some native Spanish speakers do something a little different, however, and this pronunciation is particularly common in the highland and interior regions of the Andean nations. What happens is that when it appears immediately after S, trilled R becomes what I call sibilant R, which is pronounced like a combination of zh, like in the English word garage, plus retroflex R at the same time, something like zh. So this phrase would be pronounced something like mucho más raras, and this one would be something like nariz rosaba la frente. What a lot of non-native Spanish speakers do to resolve this difficult phonetic combination is pronounce the S normally and then convert the trilled R to a tapped R, something like mucho más raras and nariz rosaba la frente. Apart from non-native Spanish speakers, I've also heard this pronunciation from Spanish-English bilinguals living in the U.S., as well as a couple native Spanish speakers of S-reducing dialects who I'd press to try to pronounce both the S and the trilled R. But to the best of my knowledge, this is not an ordinary pronunciation for monolingual native Spanish speakers living immersed in their native language, speaking normally and naturally. El Pulpito used this pronunciation for both of the situations in which trilled R followed S. There were several other situations in which El Pulpito pronounced R with some degree of imprecision. 
In some cases, trilled R was assimilated, but not in a phonetic context where Rs are normally assimilated. In some cases, trilled R was pronounced as a simple tap, and in some cases, tapped R and trilled R were pronounced with difficulty when adjacent to other consonants. I identified a couple of places where El Pulpito seemed to pronounce tapped R in the back of the throat, which I believe is due to influence from his native German. Maybe the only other helpful observation I could make relates to pronunciation of T and D. There are a couple of places where El Pulpito pronounces D as an apicoalveolar tap instead of as an interdental fricative or a dental stop. And I think that these mispronunciations may be part of a larger pattern. While I can't identify many specific examples of T or occlusive D being pronounced strongly alveolar, I have a general sense that all of his T's and occlusive D's are a little too alveolar. What I mean by this is that in Spanish, T and occlusive D are pronounced with the tongue on the back of the upper front teeth, rather than on the gummy ridge above the front teeth, as we do in English. To my ear, el pulpito doesn't pronounce them strongly alveolar, as in English, but he also doesn't pronounce them obviously dental, as in authentic Spanish. I feel that his pronunciation could be improved if he positioned the tip of his tongue further from the gum line, near the incisal edges of the front teeth for the dental consonants, and between the upper and lower front teeth for the voiced interdental D. At this point, I've identified things that I think represent a pattern. There are some isolated mispronunciations here or there, but I don't think nitpicking every detail is terribly useful. Everyone makes random boo-boos when they speak or read aloud, and there's probably nothing helpful about pointing out things that aren't part of a pattern. So what can El Pulpito do to improve his pronunciation? Well, he's really well positioned to perfect all of these sounds. He already pronounces most sounds very accurately, and he even pronounces these sounds accurately some of the time. In my estimation, all he would need to do is the following. Pronounce all of his V's the same way he pronounces B's. Since he already pronounces B's correctly, this would immediately solve this problem. Improve his consistency in pronouncing double L and Y, always pronouncing them like a voiced palatal approximant rather than yod. Since he already pronounces the voiced palatal approximant extremely well some of the time, this improvement should be easy. For the S trilled R combination, for the dialect of Spanish he seems to be emulating, it's probably best for El Pulpito to reduce S and trill R. Since he's already perfectly capable of pronouncing trilled R, this shouldn't be any problem for him. With regard to other tapped and trilled R's, his mouth is already capable of excellent R's. He pronounces them much of the time. It's really just a matter of achieving better consistency, identifying those phonetic contexts that give him trouble, and practicing and drilling words with those sound combinations until they become easy for him. Maybe the only sounds that would require him to actually make a systematic change would be the apical occlusive consonants T and D. But again, this isn't a huge change. All it would require is for him to adjust the point of articulation a few millimeters. To me, these improvements seem very doable, but they require something most people aren't willing to do, and that is practice and drill pronunciation. El Pulpito obviously isn't most people, though. I believe if he were willing to read one book aloud focusing on each of these things, he could probably have all this straightened out by the end of that book one book. That's not that much. He could even select a book that has an audiobook version and listen to the narrator for examples of native pronunciation. Now, El Pulpito has also asked me to estimate a numerical score for him based on the scale that I've presented in previous videos. People who participate in this project can elect not to receive a numerical estimate, but El Pulpito has asked for one, so I'll go ahead and do that now. I normally start this estimate by making a general and non-technical observation about how good someone's Spanish sounds. And I'd say that El Pulpito's pronunciation is always easy to understand, and that his foreign accent is mild enough that it's probably not distracting. On the other hand, it can't be said that he always pronounces basic Spanish sounds accurately. He's proven that he's perfectly capable of pronouncing all basic Spanish sounds accurately, because there's no sound that he doesn't pronounce accurately much of the time. But there are several sounds that he pronounces inaccurately at least some of the time. Regarding Spanish phonological rules, he certainly applies them correctly more often than this would imply, but probably not quite as often as this would imply. So based only on this short sample, I'd give El Pulpito a rating of 6 for pronunciation. And let me reiterate that this level of pronunciation is excellent and absolutely something to be proud of. And I don't think that it would be very difficult for him to correct the issues we've discussed here and bump himself up a step on the scale. I just want to thank El Pulpito for collaborating with me in this video. It takes a lot of guts and a lot of humility to put yourself out there for the whole internet to judge. It's exactly this attitude that makes someone a great learner and a great teacher.
All right, this is the conclusion of today's video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. I'll be evaluating the Spanish of more subscribers in the near future.